I'm going to explain how to create a proposal. But before you create a proposal, you must input the customer contact information in the customer catalog. In order to do so, you click on Customer Panel. It opens up and you cl click on Customer Catalog. Now this is where you input your customer contact information. You do so by going up to the top right, clicking the New button. Now when you click the New button, it opens up a new screen that allows you to type in the customer contact information. I won't cover how to fill out the bottom portion of this, but you just need to fill out the customer's name, address, all the stuff that makes sense here, city, state, all the items that you see that are in asterisks are required fields. Now, however, I highly recommend that you also put their email address in right here. Now, I won't populate these right now, but I just want to show you how to do it. I'm going to navigate back home. I'm going to go to an estimate and show how to create a proposal. So I'll click home. We'll imagine that we, we input a new customer there. I'm going to go over and click on List Estimates. When I do, it displays the estimates that I have created. I'm going to click on what I've been working on, Commercial Estimate. Next, I'm going to create a proposal. Now, from this page, the way I do it is I click on the, the Proposal slash RCO button. When I do, it takes me to a new screen to select a customer. I click on the arrow to select the customer, and it takes me to the customer catalog. Now, again, it, when you input your customers, they land in here. I'm just going to create, or rather, I'm going to click on Sample Customer here, just to show an example of how to do this. Now, keep in mind, again, we're creating a proposal. And I selected the customer, and the cu customer's contact information populates here automatically. The one thing that you want to do is you want to type in a project description. You want to type in the plans or the dates of the plans and the specifications. Now I won't do that right now but it's important that you do because this is all going on the proposal. So when you're all done with that you go up to the top and you click Save and when you do this is the beginning of your proposal. Now you'll notice that the $59,097, the amount in the recap, has populated to the proposal. And that's how you get started creating a proposal. Once you've created your proposal, you clarify what's included in the price. We do that by using inclusions. You click on the Edit button at the top left, Click on Edit Inclusions. It opens a new screen. Now there's two ways to input them. First, it will type in the ones that we want. Click on the New button at the top. It opens a box here. I'm going to type in Price Includes the following. Next, I'll click the Save button at the right. Now when I type these in, they'll end up on the proposal. Some people like to itemize and type in a big long list of things that are included. If you do that, you just keep on clicking the new button and typing them in. Say one, two hundred amp panel. Next you click save. Now again, these are going to land on the proposal when I'm done. If you want to type them, I suggest that you click the New button and type in your list or lists of them first. And after that, you might want to take a look at Select from Defaults. When you click on the button Select from Defaults, these are inclusions that are stored in what we call an inclusion library. And you can select them from here if you want. So I'm going to check Applicable Tax. Click Import Selected over at the right. And when I do, that lands here in the list. Now when I go back to the proposal, I'll scroll down to the bottom and I see the inclusions that I typed or included here. And that's how you add inclusions to your proposal. On your proposal, once you've created your inclusions, and let's say that you created them and you want to change the order, then you can just go in here and click View Order at the bottom right here. Now read these instructions to understand how to do it, but it says drag an item by its handle, which is a little blue bar, up or down to its new position. Very simple. So let's say that you type all this list of inclusions in, you want to change the order, you simply grab one and move it. 
When you're done, you just click back to proposal, and you'll see the order was changed. This is a great time-saving feature. A lot of times you type these things in, you realize you want them in a different order, so you can go into view order and change it. When you're done saying what's included in the price, you want to say what's excluded from your price. We call that exclusions. Click on the edit button at the top left. Click on edit exclusions. Same drill here. You can, you can type in new ones. Click the new button. I'm going to say concrete work by others. Click the Save button to save it. Again, when it appears here, it's going to end up on the proposal. Next, I'm going to select from defaults. Just click Select from defaults at the top. You just check the boxes of the items you want to exclude. In this case, I'm going to exclude plywood backboards. I'm going to exclude HVAC control wiring. And I'll exclude temporary power or light. Click Import Selected at the far right and it populates the exclusions here. I click back to the proposal, scroll down, and I see my exclusions listed here. Now, again, to change the order of these, you just click View Order. Read these instructions on how to do it, but you just grab this little blue handle. If for some reason you want to list them differently, you just grab one and drag it to where you want it to be. You can just move them wherever you want. When you're all done, go back to the proposal, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see where the exclusions landed here. And that's how you input your exclusions. To qualify what's included in your price on your proposal, you input qualifications. Click the Edit button. Select Edit Qualifications. Now just like Inclusions and Exclusions, you can click the New button to add them, and you can also select from defaults. Now I won't show how to type them in because I've already shown that before, but I'm just going to select from defaults. When I do, there's a list of, of uh, default qualifications here. Now I'm going to check several of these. Look at number six. It says all work to be form performed. Let me say it again all work to be performed during normal working hours. Number eight is a good one, cutting, patching, and painting of existing surfaces by others. So what you do is you just go through this laundry list, check the ones that you want to be on your proposal. Here's a good one, number 16. This pricing based on existing power panels having space and hardware for added circuit breakers. Once you're done selecting from the left side, you click Import Selected. Again, these are the qualifications that are going to land on the proposal. I click the back button, go back to the proposal, and scroll down to the bottom, and I see the qualifications that were added. Now once again, if you want to change the order for any reason, you can just click View Order and change the order of them. That's how you add your qualifications. I'm going to explain how and why to use the synchronize button in the proposal. This is an example of a proposal. And you can see the total price in the proposal is $59,097. Now here's something that happens fairly frequently when you're estimating projects. Let's say you get done bidding this job, or get done estimating it I should say, and then you realize that you forgot something. Well, I'm going to go back to the recap here. I'll click on the recap button. I'm going to say I forgot to put a fuel charge in for my expenses. So I'll drill down here to my expenses. I'm going to click the link here. It'll open up dialog box here. There's a category for fuel. And I'm going to say I forgot to add, I want to add $200 for fuel. So I type in 200 here. I'll scroll up to the top. Save and close. Now keep in mind, whenever you add anything to your estimate, you have your markup here set at, uh, this is just an example, but the markup, the overhead is set at 
and the profit is set at 8%. So when I added that $200 for fuel, it marked it up 12 and 8, and it displays a new total in the recap. Okay. Well, the program doesn't automatically change the number in the proposal. You have to synchronize it. So I'm going to scroll up to the top. I'm going to go to Proposal RCO here. Go back to my proposal. Notice the proposal is still the same number that it was. I'm going to click the Synchronize button to synchronize it with the recap. When I click on it, it shows a screen here. Now, in a nutshell, the bottom here where it says Current Line Items, that's how the proposal is set up now, $59,097. And at the top, it says Synchronize Line Items. That means when I synchronize, it's going to update to what the, what the uh, recap shows, $59,345. Click the Synchronize button at the top. When I do it, synchronizes with the recap. Okay, so that's when and how you use the synchronize button in your proposal. When your proposal's complete, you can either print it out and fax it to your customer, or you can email it right from Red Rhino. Now, in order to print it out, you just click the preview button at the top and go through your print options. In this case, I'm going to show you how to email it. Just click the email button at the top. You'll see that there's two different ways you can send it, either HTML or PDF. I'm going to recommend that you send it PDF. Now, here's another thing. You just type in the email address of the person you want to send it to. Here's something else I highly recommend. I highly recommend that you carbon copy yourself. Always CC yourself so this proposal lands in your inbox in your email and if you want to send it to more than one person you can do it from there. In this case I'm just going to copy and paste my own email address to send it to myself. Okay, You can type in a message to your customer if you want. Now I'm just going to scroll down here real slow this is what the proposal looks like to your customer. Now, if you've downloaded your logo, your logo will appear above the word proposal here. I'll scroll down a little further. Notice how this can become a, a contract. I have many times used this proposal as a contract. There's a place for your signature on the left and your customer's signature on the right. Notice that your customer is signing right below where the price is shown. Okay. I'll scroll down a little bit again. This is how it looks to your customer. Scroll up to the top to send it. You just click Send PDF. And that's how you email your proposal.